The bearer of the burning quill is within, my lord. Pretty empty. The greater number of our order live among the masses, hidden in plain sight. Even here in Tabor, our brothers and sisters pose as common folk. If any should reveal themselves to you, I beg you keep their true identity secret. Lord Rosfield, is there aught the Undying might assist you with this day? Perhaps. My brother said that your order was helping him with his quest to uncover Ultima's origins. Have you learned anything of note since last we spoke? Little and less, I regret to report. I see. Be assured, however, that we will not rest until the truth is known. Even now, our archaeologians scour ruins in every corner of the realm for traces of Ultima's touch. Fallen ruins, I take it. Dating back as far as Phoenix Gate. Indeed. Ultima's thralls are oft sighted among the remnants of the fallen civilization, as if protecting the secrets concealed within. Secrets we'd see unearthed. Should our methods be of interest, my lord, mayhap it would please you to observe some of our number at work. Would that be possible? Of course. A survey has been conducted not far from here. Perchance you are familiar with Kretov, a small hamlet built around a fallen airship. I was due to visit my colleagues there to collect their preliminary findings, but if you would consent to do so in my stead, I'm sure that they would be honored to relate any discoveries they have made to you directly. All right. I'll go and meet with them. They will be most gratified, I am sure. Might I suggest you take the road through Titan's Wake? It will lead you straight to the village after but a short walk. Thank you. I will. I wish you a safe journey, my lord. May the Firebird's flames burn ever in your heart. Come on. Faster! All right. Girl.
You'll pay for this. May still be survivors. Should have stayed in the past. These must be Cyril's colleagues. You have our thanks, stranger. Who are you? Ah, forgive me, my lord. I did not recognize you. You are Lord Rosfield, are you not? We are archaeologians tasked with surveying this site. When the echoes appeared, our brothers here occupied their attentions. Thanks to them and to you, we were, for a mercy, able to see our duty to its conclusion. You call that a mercy? Your brothers might still be alive if you put their safety before your duty. Surely this survey wasn't worth dying for. We are charged with uncovering Ultima's origins, a duty of the highest import, as I'm sure you will agree. And you think your dead brothers would agree with you too? I know they would. They gave their lives for the cause, an honor to which all undying aspire. Now, to what do we owe the honor of your presence, Lord Marquis? Cyril told me of your work here, and I agree to collect your findings in his stead. I see. That is most kind. Pray, take them then, with our humble thanks. May the Firebird's flame burn ever in your heart, as it does in ours. It's one thing to lay down your life for another. But for a survey... I suppose I'd better get this back to Cyril.
You are returned, my lord. I... collected your colleague's preliminary findings. Here, take them. My thanks. I shall study them, and inform you forthwith if I discover aught that might aid you in your fight against Ultima. Cyril, your survey party suffered several losses in Kratov. Losses which could have been avoided had the others not chosen to complete their work instead of saving their friends. Were these your orders? No. This was their choice. Every Undying devotes his life to the service of the Phoenix. It is our sole duty. And should we die in discharging it, so be it. Even when death is avoidable. My lord, I fear that this is not a point over which it would be fruitful to argue. The Undying have served the Phoenix for countless generations. And your opinion of our methods, however earnest, is not like to change them. We live to serve the Phoenix. Our very order exists for that purpose, and that purpose alone. Cyril, I know that you and your brethren answer only to Joshua, but allow me to offer you a word of advice. It does not further the cause of the Phoenix to have his loyal followers surrender their lives without good reason. Provide your survey parties with an escort, that they might live to do their duty for years to come. Think not only of how you can serve the Phoenix, but how Joshua would want you to serve him. Please. For all our sakes. I thank you for your advice, my lord. If you will permit me to respond, our faith in his grace, Joshua Rossfield, is absolute. And we of the Undying will do what we believe is right to fulfill our duty unto him. As first shield to the Phoenix, I am sure you understand what it means to do one's duty. I do. Then we are of the same mind. And it is my hope that we may continue to do our duty together. Back the way it was. Say that, you know. Clive! To what do I owe the pleasure? I just wanted to see how the town's been faring since you brought everyone together. Uh, since we brought everyone together, all is absolutely wonderful. Conrad and Natalie's hands remain safely away from each other's throats and firmly at the helm. Our stores are full and the bandits still too disorganized to raid them. Just as the good Lady Jane and Lord Underhill intended. Are you a lord? Lubor's going to be one too. They're going to make him the Lord of Dalamil. Because of how he stopped all the grown-ups from fighting. It's the Mayor of Dalamil, dear child. And the vote hasn't taken place just yet. But if the people wish me to lead them, I shall. And my first act will be to build a school so that menaces like you two learn not to interrupt your elders. Speaking of menaces, there may be a rather worrying one just over the horizon. May there indeed. I'm afraid the example Conrad and Natalie set in putting aside their differences in presenting a united front might have caught the bandits' attention. And they might have elected to take a similar approach. They have formed what one could call 
a league of outlaws. And they grow more organized by the day. But we'll fight them all off just like last time. No matter how many of them there are. Won't we, Lubor? Of course we will. If we continue to work together, we can overcome any challenge we choose to face. The longer we avoid facing this one, the more difficult it will be. Until the only way to overcome it might be to run for the hills. Our best hope is to nip these efforts at organization in the bud. By finding those ne'er-do-wells who have yet to join the cause, and ensuring that they never do. Perhaps a certain Lord Underhill might be willing to lend us his aid once more? How could I refuse? <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Victor will fill you in on the particulars. I have him stationed by the Desert Gate, receiving and collating reports from my scouts. Such an amenable soul. He reminds me of you. I'll go and speak with him. What's the difference between a lord and a man? The League of Outlaws. Sounds like we have some competition. Still in Dalamil, Victor. Ah, Sid. I thought you'd have returned to Kosnis by now. I did. Then I came back. I've developed something of a fondness for the place. And having worked so hard to see it saved from one fate, it would seem remiss to abandon it to another. A sentiment Master Lubor certainly isn't shy about exploiting. Hence my doing his bidding yet again. You're not the only one. What does he want you to do? He asked for my aid in putting down the bandits. And he said that you might be able to help me find them. Then you've come at just the right time. I was on my way to speak with Conrad about how to organize our forces. There are more camps in the vicinity than we can safely strike at once. But we must strike together, and we must strike soon at as many camps as we can. We can't give this League of theirs time to rally its forces. All right. Which camp shall I take? There's one upriver. Just out there, across the dunes. Leave it with me. Those ne'er dwells when we band together. There'll be no match for us. Let's go. Straight home now. That must be the Camp Victor mentioned. Come on then, Toggle. That's him! The one who killed Nock with his fingers! to know. Sid, where are you? Ah, 
I see the bandits didn't pose you any trouble. No, but... That's not why you're here, is it? No. Something's happened. We need you back in Dalimil. What is it? The whole town's in uproar. They're saying that Lubor is a bearer. What? Seems that one of our parties wasn't as thorough as they should have been. They let one of the bandits escape, and his escape route took him right through Dalimil. Some of the children spotted him, and he was about to silence them. And when Lubor felled him with a bolt of magic, and without a crystal. But that's not possible. It is, if he's a bearer and has been hiding it all these years, which is what people are saying. If he has, well, I wouldn't blame him. No man is branded by choice. Still, all those people see is a man who's lied to them all his life. One who has made a leader of himself when the world believed he should have been a slave. Fuck. I don't know where we go from here, but I know one thing. Lubor needs all the friends he can get right now. You're right. And now everyone knows. I made it a habit to keep a crystal close at hand for just such an occasion. And when that occasion arose, I forgot to reach for it. Well, it was bound to come out sooner or later. We're sorry, Lubor. We tried to keep running, but we just couldn't anymore. There's nothing to be sorry for. I rather enjoyed playing the hero for once. All that matters to me is that you two are safe. Look at him, talking to his betters like it's nothing. All lies are wager, just like the ones he fed us all these years. Once people make up their minds, it's hard to change them. We need to do something, and quickly. Convince the people not to let their prejudices blind them. Convince them that nothing has changed. That their enemy lies outside these walls, not within them. You're right. We should speak to everyone. I'm glad you agree. I'll handle the townsfolk. I'm a downright born and bred, they listen to me. You head to the tavern. Make Conrad and Natalie remember who Lubor really is. They know that Lubor and I are friends. I might not make for the most impartial of interlocutors. Lord Underhill of Randalar's League of Merchants, however, is a trusted and impartial mediator of note. I'll do what I can. Lubor, I'll stay here with the children. I can't promise anything, but we'll try. And that is all I can ask of you. Why are you taking the bearers? Why do they always have to make such a fuss? He knew all along that he was playing us for fools. And we fell for it. We followed him. A bearer. Forgive me for disturbing you, but... Could I have a moment of your time? Hmm. I've seen your face before. As have I. Lord Underhill, wasn't it? Of the League of Merchants. Uh, that's right. I wanted to speak to you about Lubor. The rumors that he's a bearer. All true, I'm afraid. He'll never be mayor now. Not if I have anything to do with it. But what of his wares? Bearer or no, his steel is highly valued throughout the Republic. In this, at least, he's done the town a service. Might that not earn him a little leniency? Leniency? He pretended to be one of us when he was laughing behind our backs all the while. I'm sorry, my lord, but he lied to us. He lied to you. He cannot be trusted. So what do you propose? Will you drive him from his home? Close his forge? Perhaps. That is a question for the people of Dalimil. And they will thank you not to get involved.
townsfolk have made their minds up. There was nothing I could do. Nor I. Conrad and Natalie refused to consider anything but their own wounded pride. You never know. Once their anger is cooled, they might see things differently. For now, we should report back to Loombor. All right. Why the hell would Victor take the bearer's son? I assume the situation is hopeless? There's still hope. But... But, perhaps not in this lifetime, I think it's fair to say. You mustn't think like that, Lubo. Give them time. They'll come around. We'll talk some sense into them in the end, you'll see. No, you won't. And your efforts would be better spent elsewhere. But Lubo... Rosina would often tell me... That steel does not lie. That a blade is a reflection of the smith who forged it. To yourself be true, that was her point. Rather an ironic one when you consider that her life was taken with a blade of her own making. But I do not doubt that she was always true to herself and what she believed in right to the end. And so must I be. I must do what I know to be right no matter what others might think of me. And now, I know what that is. I must embrace my new role of villain so that the people of Dalamil have something to unite against. For only united can they hope to stand against the threat that awaits them. I'll need to make a suitably dramatic exit, of course. Don't go, Lubor. You're the only one who was ever kind to us. We'll be all alone. Again. Trust me, little ones. It is for the best that I go. Not only for the town, but for you, too. How could it possibly be for the best? These children need you. The least you can do is give the townspeople a chance to change their minds. I would not take it, Victor. It's over. Over, you say? And so just like that, you're going to throw this town and these children to the wolves? I thought you were better than this. But it seems you had me fooled as well. Victor. Forget it. Do what you will. Are you sure you're making the right choice, Lubor? Of those available to me, I believe it's the best one. Yes. Ah, but where are my manners? Here. A reward for clearing out that bandit camp. Right then. I have packing to do. If there's anything I can do. Anything. I'll bear it in mind. Thank you. Why didn't he tell us? <laughs> 